nice, the gentle lady from Florida, Ms. Salazar. Thank you uh, to Chairman Velasquez and Ranking Member Luchtemeyer for holding this necessary hearing. And I also want to thank you, Administrator Isabela Guzman, for being present and willing to answer our questions. Because unfortunately, Madam, your people, the SBA office in my district, just don't answer the phones. And I have consulted with other congressional offices, and the same thing. A small business owner is desperate, looking for a loan, and he just can't get through. Let me just give you an example. His name is Marquise McLemore. He lives in South Miami, and we finally reached a human being, not a machine. The SBA lady who answered the phone was unaccountable and unable to answer basic questions. And I know the situation very well, Madam Guzman, because in my district office, I created a division called the Prosperity Center to help my people achieve the American dream, and for us immigrants, is to have their own business. And you know the SBA is instrumental for that Prosperity Center. There are other scenarios when an individual who has been able to start the process, thank God, but gets stuck in the middle of it. Because every time they call, there's a new person to talk to. They have to re-explain their problems. They have to re-upload the documents. You know, madam, SBS is not a MasterCard or a Visa to be bouncing people around. People have choice to get another credit card. But in this case, there is no other SBA for small business. And your agency can make it or break it for millions and millions of small business in America. Let me tell you so bad that my congressional office and my prosperity center has a hard time getting information from your agency. So just imagine if a congressional office can't get through, what about Rosa Lopez from Little Havana or John Rogers from Cudler Bay? Madam Guzman, I understand that you're responsible for this, and I also understand that this is uncomfortable, very uncomfortable for you for what I'm describing, but it's more painful to lose your business because of a bureaucrat, and I'm sure you agree with me. These are real people, and these are real, life-changing problems. Let me just give you one more piece of information, and then maybe you can answer me. There are two million small business owners in South Florida. Two million, there is one office. One office that serves two million people, during the pandemic, as you've said, the SBA received $3 billion to hire more people and provide a better service. Now, let me ask you something. How many people have you hired in the last 10 months? How many of those in South Florida? How many new call centers and how many of them are bilingual? Thank you for that. We do, we do value customer service experience, and, and that's been a priority of mine since I came in, which was uh, what instigated our overhaul. And I think you're referencing mostly to the COVID idle program, where uh, it has been very challenging uh, to get answers. So we've three so times- So you know that we have a problem with customer service. We completely agree with you, and we are trying uh, to fix it. And what we've done so far uh, is we've three times the amount of customer service uh, you know, resources that we have available. We've switched vendors as well. Uh, and we've, uh, of course, bilingual capacity is available uh, within this uh, within this network. We've also tried to increase in the field, and so we will take back your concerns about the Florida District Office in particular. Uh, Thank we, you. What we've also tried to uh, increase the district connection to our platform. Uh, and previously, they did not. Have I'm going to get back to you in 30 days, and I'm going to tell you if my Small Business Administration office in South Florida is working according to what you're telling me. Let me just give you one more concern. A month ago, and this is even worse, a month ago, the general inspector, or general, inspector general, I should say, the inspector general found that women and minorities, you and me, women and minorities, are not getting their fair share of receiving small business government contracts. For me, that's lethal, because I promised this to my constituents through my prosperity center, and I have to deliver, madam. And the SBA has to help me because it's instrumental. My question is, how are you going to fix this, that we do get the fair share of what we need, women and minorities? Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you for the question. Yes, I, government contracting is a priority and, and equity across our programs. We want to make sure all of our small businesses access um, the federal government. And right now, we've seen over the past 10 years a decline of 40 percent. Those are stats. What are you going to do in order to, right now, under your administration, being able to, for women and minorities, to get more 
government contracts. So we have a multi-pronged approach. The first is working collaboratively with White House and OMB on the policies, uh, like category management and other policies to make sure that businesses can access all contracts across the federal government. Uh, we've increased the budget for the president's request for an increase on the government contracting business development uh, team's resources so that we can increase outreach and uh, get more. Can you give me in 30 days a report of what have you done in South Florida in order to improve the access from this women and minorities. We'd be happy to sit down with you and your team to go over uh, specific initiatives that we can implement. To help my constituents. Thank you, madam. Time has expired, and now we recognize the gentleman from Wisconsin.